Hi there and a very warm welcome to the continuation of last week's series where we are going to take a look at Octane 2025.1 beta features. In this episode we are tackling two features because one is not enough. So one is the Vectron displacement and the other is the very cool lens simulation or realistic lenses as Octane is calling it. So without further ado again, let's grab your coffee, notice something and let's jump right in. This is the preview for the second half of our video, which is the realistic lens simulation. So Octane has data sets now that can simulate lenses and their behavior like in real world. And we will have a look what you can set there and what you can expect from it. So hopefully stay tuned as we have a look at Vectron displacement first. And welcome to the standalone 2025.1 beta. As the features haven't made it to the blackens yet, this is our workspace today. Let's talk about Vectron and Vectron displacement. If you don't know what Vectron is, I will talk about this a little bit later. This time I opted for the provided scene for this feature by Otoy, as Cinema 4D is a little bit lacking in Vectron features. I also show this a little bit later on. To no one's surprise, Vectron displacement is behaving like a normal displacement, so we have a box and a noise. And if we go into the displacement settings and set them to zero, then we just see the box. And then we can use the noise to displace our surface in both directions. You can see this is working very smooth and fast with a great amount of detail. And this is essentially one of the benefits of the Vectron displacement. Now, the further we go right, the more feature rich the setups are. So in the second setup, we can see that we can actually implement node trees to control the noise. In this case, we have a spherical field that dictates where the displacement is seen. And in the last example, this is brought together with a major feature that Vectron is known for. Here, we are subtracting a sphere from a box and then have basically the same setup as before. We have a spherical field that we can move around to dictate where the noise is actually visible. The only small addition here is a range node that has been brought in here to clamp below zero values. I can hear you say, this is amazing. I can't wait to use it on my models. And this is where a small disclaimer is in order. So Vectron is a sign distance field based operator. This means objects just as the box or this sphere here are not polygonal, but signed distance fields. So something rather similar to the volume builder if you're coming from Cinema 4D. What you can do with those is pretty cool. For example, if I go to the subtract here, I can decide on the bevel size between the sphere and the box, make it smaller, for example. I would need to make the sphere radius bigger. So you can see the bevel size is now much smaller and much sharper. Though to get this effect on your own objects, you would have to convert them into signed distance fields first. While I still love this feature, it's not as easy to use as you might first think. So let's real quick jump into Cinema 4D and Blender after that and give a report of the state of things there. Welcome to the short visit in Cinema 4D land. Now, as I said, the Vectron displacement feature hasn't made it to the plugins yet, so we can just use the Vectron standard objects. Let's do so by going to Objects, then down to Vectron and then SDF primitives. SDF stands for Signed Distance Field. Let's create a box and as I said, those are not polygonal, so you can see the wireframe here. To see something in the live viewer, let's create a daylight system and angle it a little bit to make it brighter. If we select the SDF box here, you can see its settings. For example, we can round it, so let's do so. And you can see there's something off. Even if I hit a value of 10 here, the roundness is very small. And this is what I hinted at before. The Cinema 4D implementation is very lacking and has bugs like this. Let's actually make it do something. So let's go to objects yet again, Vectron, and instead of SDF primitives, go to operators and select union. This will make the cube a child of the operator. And if we now duplicate the cube here, 
and then move it slightly, you can see there is a transition now from the one cube to the other. This also respects materials, so if we create a diffuse material real quick and give it some color here and then assign it to the first cube, you can see it gives a nice transition from the one to the other. The huge caveat here is that this is a hierarchy based system, which makes it really hard to implement coming from the node based system that the standalone has. So fingers crossed for a node based Vectron system in Cinema 4D in the future. Welcome to Blender land. It has been a while. So in contrast to Cinema 4D, Blender Octane is using nodes. To get there, you need a object in your scene and give it a material. And then you can use the material nodes to get your Vectron setup going. So shift A to see all your Octane nodes. You find the vector nodes under Octane Geometry. Let's create a union node and then also a box node. Here we go. Let's connect it all up. Input one. And here you just select one of those inputs, for example, displacement. In order to let Octane know that it's handling Vectron nodes, we need to go to data under the Octane mesh properties, select the node tree here. So first select the material that the node tree is contained and second select the node that should be connected. For us, it's union. And here you can see the cube popping up. It's quite big. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Here we go. Also, let's round it slightly. Last but not least, let's duplicate this cube here and then put it into the input two. And now we need to offset it. So let's create a transform and then go to the position here and move it slightly to the side here. And then what we can do is increase the radius of the transition and give it a material and also make this like orange, for example, like the one before. Here we go. And here you can see the node-based approach of Blender is clearly along the line of the standalone and therefore has an advantage compared to Cinema 4D. Of course, this is not a Vectron tutorial. I'm just showing you what's possible. Then you can explore on your own. But now on to the start of the show, realistic lenses. Of course, this comes with an in-between stop in Cinema 4D land to show you the scene I've created to judge those lens characteristics. What I did here is put some emphasis on highlights. For example, those balls have indents, which catch the sunlight, as well, of course, as the illuminated pluses on the backdrop. This gives us a good scene to especially judge the bouquet of the lens simulations, which is one of the main factors of a lens characteristic. If you don't know how to export a scene to the standalone, I go over that in my last video. The link is in the upper right corner right now. But without further ado, let's jump into the standalone. And welcome to the standalone. So this is our scene with the standard camera that we used in Cinema 4D or what it's called there, thin lens camera. It's very easy to get to the new feature set just click on the thin lens camera and then move up one line to the realistic lens camera. Here we go. As you can see, this changed our field of view, our focal length. And this is also the most important thing to note. If I go to the lens section here and roll it out, you can see we have a lot of different cameras here that are simulated, but each comes with its own millimeters, so focal length. This is mainly because simulating a zoom lens with a lot of optics moving inside is very complicated and would make the process a lot harder. Let's stick with the Anchenu 100mm lens for now and move up the target a little bit so we can see a little bit better what's in the scene and the background here. And you can see with a fully opened aperture, we have this nice bouquet pattern here. So it's a pattern that's called cat eyeing as the front lens barrel is limiting the circle of confusion at the rim. Another really cool feature of the realistic lens camera is this section that you might know from your original thin film camera. So while the lens is being simulated, this doesn't hold you back from putting in your favorite settings here. What we, for example, can do is increase the emphasis on the edge of the bouquet by increasing the aperture edge. 
and also make the side count of our aperture lower, for example, four sides, and then turn it slightly 0.125. So you have square bokeh in the middle, and then it fades out to the cat eyeing. So a lot of creative freedom here. A highly requested feature that will make many of you happy is the chromatic aberration. But this comes with two words of caution. One, of course, it will increase your render time. And second, be careful with the slider, because if you push it all the way to your right, then you will be greeted with an alternate psychedelic universe. So let's be careful here and go with values between 5 and 15. So let's take the middle here 10% and let's render for a while. As you can see, this creates a nice colored fringe around the blazes of contrast as your bouquet and can give you the little bit of additional realism you might seek. To move a little bit faster, let's get rid of the chromatic aberration again. So those lenses not only come with advantages, but also disadvantages of real-world lenses. For example, this one here is being a little bit soft. And if I go to the Kodak Passival here, you can see it has a lot of vignetting. By the way, if you are searching for a swirly bouquet, this is the lens for you. To get rid of vignetting, you can also do the same thing as in reality and stop down. So if I go to the stop of 5, for example, you can see the vignetting is mostly gone now. Of course, this gives us a sharper depth of field. Now, since I can't talk about all of the 16 lenses that are available here, what you can see on screen right now are pictures of the rendered lenses, both in the biggest aperture or that one that leads most light through and stopped down, as well as a close-up render that emphasizes bouquet. You can pause the video to have a look here, but also I will upload them on my Google Drive the link is down in the description below. I think this will make it easy for you, or at least a lot more easy than before, to find the right lens of choice. I personally can't wait to get this feature inside of Blender or Cinema 4D to play around a little bit more and get this in connection to most of my scenes. And that is it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Let's thank those people who made this video possible. My Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Leon Studio TV, and Soltan. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, Dui Jim, For d Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Shitrit, Aram Sadikian, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Eva Nilsson Tavares, Graham Bagnall, James Conkel, Joel McEmer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Matthew Hall, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Raphael, Ralf, Raiko, Rishok, Reza Ansari, Shamos Johnson, Shiro2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Welcome to the simulated time displacement bubble at the end of the video. Let's open a bit of a conversation here. I'm just interested what you're working on these days, if you're allowed to tell me, or if you have any interesting ideas for future projects for yourself that you put off because of other factors, for example. I definitely have some bigger projects in mind that I always wanted to do, but it's very hard to do those on your own. I'm very sure you all know the feeling. Not sure if this was too off topic for the final last words. Let's go back to spec. If you want to show your support, let's post a telescope in the comments down below. Again, thank you very much for watching. I wish you a great Sunday and a good start into next week. If you're watching this later, simply an amazing time to you. And I say, happy light bending and see ya. Bye.